Okay, the time is coming to make the jump with Kimiko, but you're probably wondering, hey, what's the deal with the timeline thing? If you reject her advance, you end up... I th don't know which one it is, one of these two where you see Melody crying that they're out of air and then everyone dies. So without further ado, let's just push the buttons and see what happens. I awoke to find myself on the floor of Kimiko's quarters. Huh? What happened? I rolled onto my side to try and catch my breath on my thoughts. I wonder what time it is. The game must be starting shortly. Did the pocket watch work? Nothing about me indicates any chain. Wait. Where is the pocket watch? I sat up intrigued when Kimiko burst in the room with tears streaming down her face, clutching the very pocket watch I had just held in my hands. Kimiko? She stopped in her tracks. You! What's wrong? What happened? Who are you? Kimiko became enraged. Her once kind eyes now blazed with an indescribable fury. Kimi, it's me, Hiro. What do you mean, who are you? I just watched the woman I love die. And you dare come here with her face, with her name? The only logical cause of this could be that I had changed dimensions. In this dimension, I must have just died after losing a deletion game. I died? You will die again soon for this insult to her legacy! Kimi, please calm down. I can explain. How dare you address me with such familiarity? I? I appeared in the room instantly upon hearing Kimiko's cry. Yes, Captain? I noticed me immediately. Hero? Yes, I, it's me. My scans are indicating that you are a man, not a woman. As I was expecting. Do you possess two bodies? I have never heard of an instance of a human changing sex upon death. I've heard of it for a Time Lord. No, but I can explain. I? Let me speak to Dai. Captain, I have only just regained control. Are you sure you want me to relinquish control to Dai? I, this is an order. Bring me Dai. I bowed and accepted the Captain's command. Of course, Captain. I raised her head, revealing the fiery red eyes and sinister smile that only Dai could possess. Me? Summoned? Hath the sky fallen and hell frozen over? Pretty much. Dai, is this a joke? Kimiko pointed at me, at which Dai became very intrigued. <laughs> Did you become a man? Is this because I said you should die like one? It was a joke, not an actual recommendation. Wish I knew what you were talking about, Dai. Did you do this? Dai shrugged nonchalantly. Nope, wasn't me. Is this not the woman you just murdered before my eyes? Kimiko was becoming more short-tempered with each minute that passed. Kimi, it's me. Please, let me explain. I think I cha- Dai interrupted me as if I wasn't even there. My scan seems to indicate that they share a similar DNA structure, but nope, different person. Please, I'm from an alternate dimension. Kimiko stopped abruptly and leaned down beside me as she placed her hand on my cheek. Did you manage to get the pocket watch working? I was shaking slightly. My Kimiko made me feel warm and safe. This wasn't her. I think I did. Kimiko held up the watch she was clutching when she first entered. So with this, I can change dimensions. I can find her again. Another version of her, yes, but we should really focus on the die situation first. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Super rude. I'm standing right here. I can say it louder if you didn't hear me say it the first time. Left corner, Kimiko's lip curled upon hearing my suggestion. I should work with you to solve this issue. And then find a way back to her. I was glad Kimiko was seeing reason. This was one of the many reasons I adored her. Dai certainly was a much more pressing matter. Yes, exactly. I suppose you were right. Kimiko sighed as she stood up, now clenching the watch tightly. I want to see you on the bridge in five minutes. Gather yourself and meet me there. Yes, of course. Kimiko headed towards the door, addressing Dai as she reached the threshold. Dai. Lock this room down and cut off the local oxygen supply. What? No, Kimi! Oh, Captain, my Captain. Dai saluted, smiling sadistically. I told you not to address me as such. Kimiko snarled as the door shut. I threw myself in the doorway, but it was too late. Dai already had the room unlocked down, and I had no way to escape. Oxygen levels in the Captain's quarters are at critical levels. I repeat, oxygen levels are at critical levels. I gasped for air, my lungs withered as I became more lightheaded. My thoughts dwindled and started slipping away. As I lost consciousness, one last sound rang through my foggy mind. 
so that's the piece that you need for the female route. So that's why this mark is different compared to all the other ones. If you notice, jump. It, it's like it's immediately a skull, it's not a book. So with this piece, we now begin the female route, and then we have to work our way through that, then we can come back and start picking these off. Very convoluted, no?